In the last federal election of 2015, Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party of Canada vowed to legalize recreational cannabis. This vow is soon to become a reality as the government has proposed to move forward with their plans in July of 2018. Along with this change in legislature comes a sizable amount of public opposition that are concerned about this particular policy. But should Canadians really be worried? The answer is a difficult one, but we've collected evidence from jurisdictions that have already legalized cannabis to help you be more informed on the issue. First, let's take a look at the history of cannabis prohibition. Cannabis prohibition began in 1923, when the Canadian government passed the Act to Prohibit the Improper Use of Opium and Other Drugs. In 1961, the Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs UN Treaty bound Canada's commitment to prohibiting cannabis use. In that convention, Article 4C stipulated that cannabis must be limited exclusively to the medical and scientific purpose. The convention also mandated state punishment for its possession, sale, and use, under Article 36 1A. Fast forward to the year 2000, where a groundbreaking legal case shifted the direction of cannabis prohibition forever. The Ontario Court of Appeals ruled that the federal prohibition against medicinal cannabis breached the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms by forcing a user to choose between his health needs and imprisonment. As a result, cannabis was legalized in 2001 for the very first time under the Medical Marijuana Access Regulation, which authorized certain individuals with specific medical conditions to either obtain cannabis from a physician, grow it themselves, or have it grown by designated suppliers. This regulation was subsequently revised a number of times, which resulted in what we refer to today as the Access for Cannabis for Medical Purposes Regulations, updated most recently in 2017. It is important to note that while Canada plans to legalize cannabis in July of 2018, doing so without pulling out of the 1961 UN Treaty will be violating its obligations to international law. As a result, Canada's reputation in a rule-based world order might be called into question. Now let's take a look at what the evidence tells us about cannabis legalization. One of the most important questions to address is whether cannabis legalization will increase usage rates among Canadians, more specifically, Canadian adolescents. To answer this question, we will take a look at usage rates in states that have legalized cannabis such as Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. Various studies have concluded that there are no dramatic changes in cannabis use corresponding to cannabis legalization. This data is analogous for all four states, suggesting there are no obvious effects of legalization in relation to increasing cannabis use in adolescents. A more recent study in Colorado found that between the years of 2014 and 2016, Adolescent cannabis usage sharply decreased, although it is too soon to draw strong conclusions from this research as to the reasons for the decline. Similarly, countries such as Germany, Portugal, and Uruguay, where cannabis has been decriminalized or legalized, have rates of adolescent cannabis use that are one-third to one-half lower than the rates in Canada. Canada has one of the highest cannabis usage rates in the world, 12.7% of the population. Overall, there are inconsistent results among various sources regarding cannabis consumption after legalization due to the number of other factors at play. Increased awareness may be the cause of decreased consumption in Colorado, the legalization in Canada may lead to higher usage rates due to increased availability and reinforcing beliefs that marijuana is not harmful. While there are associated risks and benefits with cannabis use, it is important to note that cannabis is safer both on the individual and societal level than many other abuse substances including alcohol, methamphetamine, cocaine, and opioids. In fact, a study from British Columbia in 2012 showed that up to 76% of users claim to substitute cannabis with at least one other substance, including alcohol, prescription drugs, and illicit substances. This finding adds to the growing body of literature that points towards a substitution effect with cannabis legalization. Similar results were observed in a study from the Journal of the American Medical Association, where after a state introduced legalization of medicinal cannabis, there was a decrease in opioid-related deaths by 19% in a single year. This metric decreased by 33% over six years. Taking into account the current state of Canada's opioid crisis, evidence suggests that legalization of cannabis may help curb this issue. Media often discusses the negative health effects of cannabis with the public. However, whether legalization poses a problem to the public is still unknown. Literature has linked cannabis usage in adolescents to cognitive and mental health problems such as exacerbating schizophrenia in those affected.
One study looked at the association between high-potency cannabis usage and psychotic disorders in patients with and without first-episode psychosis. High-potency cannabis is a type of strain with relatively high levels of THC, which is known to cause the psychoactive effects or the high euphoric feeling. The results showed an increased risk of having a psychotic disorder by approximately three times in users of high-potency cannabis compared with those who had never used cannabis. However, the conclusions from literature are still in an area of debate and the sample populations and methodology employed is still under critical review. For example, previously established links between cannabis and schizophrenia may be due to increased cannabis use in the individuals already predisposed to schizophrenia, which is known to be passed down through genetics. Therefore, it will be important for Canada to explore the temporal relationship between cannabis use and its effects on the developing brain as July 2018 approaches. Regardless on the side you fall on when it comes to cannabis legalization, something that we can all stand behind is that the policies surrounding cannabis should be based on science that is presented fairly and within the context of available evidence. While cannabis research still remains in its infancy, Canada is faced with the opportunity to set international precedent in its approach to develop a long-term research agenda. With the right approach, we can eliminate undesirable effects and unintended consequences of cannabis use.